Okay, Jagex put out Project Rebalance blog number two. So let's look at it. Okay, we're back with the Mage Damage Redistribution. So what did they do here? Their feedback was magic setups outside of high-end endgame gear were hit disproportionately hard by the nerf to the Occult Necklace. Additionally, there were concerns expressed about balance between brackets and PvP and how much power limited defense builds were losing compared to others. Okay, sounds fair. We rejigged some numbers and added more equipment into the mix. Okay, so they've added damage to a bunch of different things. We have damage on Arams now. We have damage on Elder Chaos Druid now. We have damage on Blue Moon now. We have damage on Blood Bark now. We have damage on Eternal Boots now. Okay. And Ancestral Pieces have had their damage reduced. Okay. All right. So here's what they did. They've put damage on a bunch of different things. Offhand weapons, different armor pieces... And they've taken damage from Ancestral and given it to Eternal Boots. So a lot of people were asking for Eternal Boots to have an, a use. I actually found a Reddit post on this. and I'm, gonna, I'm going to take a quick look at it. Uh, it was hot take. A dead equipment slot has always been bad game design. You should get benefit from having every best gear in every slot. The Eternal Boot change is good. I know it feels bad being forced to bring an extra switch to achieve the same power we have now, but it should have always been like this. Okay, on paper, if you haven't done PVM, I, I can totally see how this sounds great. E Eternal Boots are terrible. You don't ever use them. And them having some use is interesting. It encourages more switches, which is good for complexity. Uh, on paper, yeah, sounds great. Here's the problem. As soon as boot switches start becoming a thing, you start encouraging things like nine-way switches. And as somebody who was trying to use pegs in Colosseum speedruns for a little bit with eight-way ranged to start with and then moving up to nine way ranged where i'm doing a full range switch with venator bow venator ring and then pegs on top it's almost impossible nine way switches are so annoying they are so difficult to pull off and not only that they've added a bunch of damage to offhand items things like mage's book malediction ward ancient wyvern shield arcane spirit shield so now you're heavily encouraged not only to do nine ways uh, i didn't mention seer's ring as well is getting some damage so if you're a mid-game player, you're actually encouraged now to do up to 10-way switches, which is ludicrous. That's actually insane to me. I, as somebody who has a lot of experience in PVM and has played for a long time, trying to do a 9-way switch, I, it was hard enough that I put the pegs back in the bank and I stopped trying to use them, even though they were worth it. Encouraging things like 9-way switches and 10-way switches, when we've just added a bunch of like hybrid gear pieces from uh, Moon's update, to get people into PBM is really bizarre to me. Encouraging people to do even more switches to get the same effect out of Mage, I don't think is the right way to go with this. I really, really don't. It seems really strange that Primordial Boots are the only useful boots, but in reality, there's a really good reason for that. It's because as soon as you add boot switches, it starts to become a nightmare to do switches. And I've also seen the argument a lot of people have said, well, it's just 2% damage. If it's not worth it to you, don't bring it. Uh, and of course, if, if you are doing casual raids and you don't care about things like max hits and stuff that much, then sure, like that's not going to matter to you. But in places like raids or speed runs or things of that nature, every inventory slot has value. And when I'm doing something like a CM speed run, I, I have each inventory slot down to the second time save, how much it is, the value of that slot. What is, the, what is that slot's value to me? And as new items come out, I look for the item that is the least time save and get rid of it. If you have a case in a raid where that slot that's not a huge time save is maybe an additional spec weapon. Let's say in Toa you're bringing a Void Waker and you're bringing Claws just for Akka. You know, that's worth it to you. It, this is not meta at all, but I'm just, as an example, you have Claws and Void Waker. Hey, those Claws are pretty good on Akka, I'm bringing that. If they make Eternal Boots have damage, maybe that Claw Switch isn't worth it anymore. Now you want to bring those Eternal Boots, but now you have to do nine-way Mage Switches. That's the trade-off. No, you don't have to bring anything, but it's worth it. And if it's worth it, you're going to bring it. That's just how it works. Damage is good. Accuracy is good. If these are worth bringing, you're going to bring them. That's that's just how it works. In a speed run, in a normal, like, efficient raid, this is how you're going to play. And even for mid-game players, it's going to encourage doing up to 10-way switches to get that same mage damage. So I don't like this spreading the damage out even further on even more items. I felt like the initial proposal was probably fine. They just needed to buff mage a little bit. That was my only issue with it. The augury damage is great. So I don't really get this splitting damage down between Eternal Boots as well and a bunch of extra pieces. It really just overcomplicates PVM. When we're 
really trying to get people into PVM with a lot of updates lately, so don't really understand that at all. Moving on to the minimum hit changes. This is actually a really good change. So they said, we're adjusting our proposal for minimum hits. Instead, any damage roll that would be a zero would be clamped up to a one. Max hits would be left unchanged. So they just did exactly what I said. Get rid of the stupid formula where we're reducing your max hit and putting it at zero instead. None of that. Zeros are no longer zeros. Zeros are ones. Perfect. Good change. Moving on to the Void Waker. Okay, so surely they walked this back, right? Here's their feedback. Void Waker's proposed special attack leaves it with barely any use cases compared to the Xerite Crossbow or Dragon Claws. I, exactly. That was my issue with it. Uh, it's completely useless compared to those two spec weapons. You will never use it over those two items. All right, so what did they do? We are adjusting our proposal. Our initial proposal suggested plus 200% accuracy on the special attack, which is the same as three times accuracy. We'd like to boost this to 400% or five times accuracy. Okay, and that last paragraph is, what this means is that the Void Waker remains an extremely accurate weapon and retains more of its current use cases, but allows us to design NPCs in the future that might feature extremely high slash defenses and open the door for DPS special attacks that focus on other melee styles like stab or crush. Okay, that line retains more of its current use cases is kind of crazy to me because they have calculators. They, they can calculate the DPS of things. And if they had, they would know that Void Waker is still not useful at the places it is right now. It is not useful at Kefri. It is not useful at Nex. You won't use it at Chambers. You don't use it anywhere. So this change does nothing. It, it makes it a bit better than it was, which was so we're, we're, we're taking Void Waker from being completely useless to completely useless. There's still not a use for Void Waker uh, with this new change, as far as I know. I can't think of a single place where I would use it. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. The point of Void Waker is to bypass things defense. That's what you use it for. Things that are incredibly tanky, you are using this to bypass their defense. Not roll against it, bypass it. If things are incredibly tanky, and you have to roll against their defense, you just use Claws or you just use ECB. If you don't know, Claws are incredibly accurate against Slash. So, and they also max much higher. So you you aren't gonna use a Void Waker if you have Claws. Claws are just better. If you're rolling against defense, Claws are better because they max higher and they're already incredibly accurate. All right, so stop. We can keep pushing this number up. We can just keep going every single proposal. All right, plus 600%, plus 800%, plus 1000%. Eventually, you'll get to the point where they're usable again. Can we just stop? Can we just stop and just leave the Void Waker as it is and just let it bypass accuracy? This seems so arbitrary and pointless. I don't understand why they think we have to roll against accuracy with the Void Waker because it's already maxes lower than the other spec options and it's worse. <laughs> it's worse unless things are incredibly tanky. So that's the whole point of it. Good on Nightmare. Good on Kefri. Good on Nex. It's not useful anymore in those places. It's not being used. I feel like somebody doesn't even know, like there's a lack of understanding of what the Void Waker's purpose was in PVM because this doesn't fix it. This doesn't fix it. Stop trying to touch this item, just leave it. Leave it as it is. It doesn't need to be touched. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone, it'll be totally fine. Nightmare uh, Loot Table. Okay, this one was kind of weird. Um, the time to complete Nightmare Fasani's Nightmare, particularly, particularly the ink, ink armor set is still extremely long even after the changes. Uh, there are pros and cons to dupe protection systems. Dupe. Okay, so they are proposing that ink armor have dupe protection. So if you get the ink pants, then the next drop will either be helmet or chest plate. And if you get ink pants and then ink chest plate, the next drop will be a helmet. And I'm assuming it would loop back through. So I'm kind of torn on this. It's a little strange. This is a good item to try this on if they wanted to try it because ink armor is all roughly the same price. Uh, the helmet, the chest plate, and the legs. The example they give is Grardor. If Grardor had dupe protection, would you still try making money there if you knew the next piece was due to be Bando's boots? No, you'd probably leave. So it doesn't work in a case like that. But in a case with ink armor where all the pieces are roughly the same value, I think it works okay. And it does make things easier for cloggers and irons. I don't know why we're balancing the game around cloggers and irons, and we're worried about that. Um, these are like more difficult game modes or like side things. So I'm not sure why we need to balance the game around that. I do like that things are more common in general. I think it's better for the game. I'm not sure dupe protection is a great way to go with this. I I'm torn. I, I I don't think it's gonna be bad for the game if they do put this in, but I don't really see how it's necessary. Okay. Moving on to ink armor changes. Feedback, the ink mace's buff being dependent on a full set doesn't help its utility on Slayer tasks. I don't know who is giving this feedback. I, I didn't see anything about this, but okay. 
So instead of relying on the full set, each piece of ink's armor will provide plus 2.5% damage and accuracy when used in conjunction with the ink mace, meaning you can still benefit from this buff while on task. Okay, whoop de doo you're, you're not going to do this, but you can if you want to. Okay, this doesn't fix anything. <laughs> we have some we have some things. We have Void Waker not doing anything. We have this not doing anything. Okay, so here's the issue. Ink came out before Torva existed, and it was designed with that in mind. Ink is incredibly, incredibly rare, and it is not very useful. So, if you want this to be decent and something people start using, you need to make it start competing with Torva. You can't have this compete with Bandos anymore like it did in the past. So, what does that look like? Okay, first of all, taking away the defense bonuses that are equivalent to Adamant armor. This cannot be equivalent to Adamant anymore. I would say maybe make it equal to Bandos armor. A little worse than Torva, but still pretty dang good. This should be better than Bandos in all use cases, I think. It is much, 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 much rarer than Bandos and much harder to get from a harder boss, right? It should be better. Just straight up, it should be better. So if we're making it compete with Torva, what do we do to make it start competing? I think that crush accuracy bonus needs to be quite a bit higher. I think the negatives on the wrong styles need to be removed. Ink armor, if you don't know, actually has negatives. If you're not using crush, it has negative stab and negative slash. So that makes it kind of hard to use with other weapons. So removing that would help a bit. Yeah, probably just adjusting those stats, upping the accuracy, removing the negatives, and giving it actual defense is probably what you need to do to make people start using this. Its main use right now is buffing your hammer and making it land more. In cases where you're doing that, people have actually started using Torva instead, places like CM and that kind of thing, because Torva does so much more damage and ink has negatives. So in places where things are tanky like CM, you don't really want those negatives on your weapon, like you're using a scythe a lot of the times in a CM. So having the negative slash bonus on ink is kind of annoying, and the lower strength also nerfs your scythe quite a bit. So maybe even buffing the strength bonus is something they need to look into. Just things like that. General, nice buffs. It, it should be better than Bandos at all times, and it should be competing with Torva in cases where Crush is really good. So I think that's the kind of thing they need to look into doing. Enough of this weird like crystal armor set bonus thing with the mace. It's not, it's not helping. It's not doing anything. This isn't changing when you're going to use it. Elder Maul special attack. The Elder Maul special attack accuracy is still pretty low and not much better than the, than the Dragon Warhammers. We'd like to give the extra 25% accuracy to the special attack of the Elder Maul. Okay. I don't know who was giving this feedback either. This just seems really weird. I didn't see a single person saying, hey, it's inaccurate. This is already a far more accurate spec than Dragon Warhammer by default and doesn't require an Avernix, so okay. I'm, I'm not opposed to it being more accurate, but okay. Just seems like a weird change. Uh, what, 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 whatever? <laughs> very, very strange. Not sure where they're going with this, and I'm not sure who is giving this feedback. It's a little weird, but okay. We're, we're still ignoring the glaive here. That was the real feedback I was giving, is that glaive is just left to be useless next to the Elder Maul. Um, glaive still needs a buff. So still giving that feedback here, uh, Glaive needs a buff or you're not going to use it the same way you don't use it right now. Uh, okay, monkey room changes. Okay, so feedback. Some players wanted clarity on how baboon shamans, volatile baboons, and cursed baboons would be impacted by the path changes. They just stated that these enemies would not have increased health and they would not be changed at all. Um, you still have to attack them with normal weapons. You don't have guaranteed max hits. It, it's fine. I'm okay with this. Uh, I'm glad that their health isn't increased with raid level. That's kind of nice. So good change, I think. Okay, so we're on version two of this blog post. What still needs changing? What are they missing? Yeah. Mage damage distribution. I would like to avoid putting that on eternal boots. Don't touch that. And also I, I would really avoid putting it on offhands. Um, encouraging more and more switches for mage damage is really not the play for making mage usable. It's just not going to be used. And at the high level, it's extremely annoying to do very large amounts of switches. So don't put that on eternal boots and be careful where you put the mage damage. Ink armor is still going to be useless, except it will be useful at nightmare. So not really improving its usability whatsoever. They probably need to look at changing ink armor as a whole and buffing its stats dramatically. So that's still an issue. Okay, Void Waker, stop trying to touch this. Stop trying, just leave the Void Waker alone. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Leave the Void Waker alone. Seriously, stop trying to change this item. It's great. It fits in just the way it is. Stop touching it. The last thing they forgot to change was the Red Crabs with P2. They still didn't change the lightning damage and that's been completely untouched. So 
really, really need to reduce that lightning damage or that change is kind of completely pointless. I would really, really like to see them bring the lightning damage down in line with solo hard mode Tob. So you actually can solo Tob and you can actually carry when your teammates all die. You can still complete a kill. That's what needs to be done. So overall, some okay changes, some weird changes again. Uh, okay, I'm hoping that they do another revision and they actually lock down what people are after and don't just take advice from Reddit posts and actually take some feedback and look at some changes here. And that's it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.